sir. Good afternoon, good afternoon, madam. How are you? I am very good. Thank you so much for your time. I think our uh, director of finance also has joined, uh, and our director of mining and construction. Oh, director of finance, Mr. So Jirath, nice. he is joined. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Anil. Uh, good afternoon, madam. So you represent uh, mining and... Uh, no, he, he represents, he is our finance director. Uh, Mr. Shantanu Roy, he'll be joining shortly. I think he's our director of okay. mining and construction. Okay. And uh, he he is the next, uh, like he has been selected by PESB to be the next uh, CMD. I'm super annuating next month. Oh, and so good. I'm getting uh, the insights from you as well as incoming chairman. That is good that you took this decision. But we are in for a very interesting time at this moment. Sure. Yeah. Being the market observer, I've been looking at BML for almost uh, more than two decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll be interesting to understand from you how actually it will participate in this round of India infrastructure story and how much will it really benefit out of it. So I will wait for your uh, colleague to join, and then maybe I will start. Yes. So access me when I share screen. So from. Um, yeah. Okay. So I will share my screen. Sir, since uh, participants have been joining. Okay. If you are okay, I will start. Yeah, you can you can start, please. Sure. So of course. Extreme thank you for taking out this time for us and all our clients. And I will start with a very basic uh, question. And that is, I was just seeing your last five years of order intake as well as opening order book. So as far as say March 23 order, book is concerned, it's not the highest in last five years. You all have had better order book, better order inflow also. And now as I see a lot of things which were not firing in India, particularly railways, metro orders, and beyond that, the defense, which has all started firing. So do we think, I mean, do we see that this year will be, that is FY23, 24, we will see a huge jump in order inflow? Yeah, it's true. Like uh, before that, uh, there's a small presentation on the company. Would uh, your participants like to go through it? Uh, we can upload maybe five minutes on that. Most certainly, definitely. Uh, our CGM finance is there, Mr. Sashi Kumar. Sashi, can you... Are you ready with that presentation? Mr. Yeah, Shashi, unmute. welcome. You, have to unmute. you are on mute. Uh, we will, Amit, please allow him to upload and give him screen share rights. Yeah, I've got it. I've mm. got it. Thank you. you got it. It. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Shashi Kumar. Yeah. I'll, Good afternoon. I'll, I'll share the presentation here. Yeah. Just a second. Sure. Sir, can I start, sir? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is our is uh, distinct. Please go ahead, sir. Statement, a general statement. Just, you know, I will. Yeah, sure, sure. Just a second. Just a second. All right. Yeah. Yeah, this is how BML is spread in India. You know, we have uh, four manufacturing complexes, one in our Kolar gold fields, one in our Bangalore itself. It, it is called as Bangalore complex from our corporate office around uh, nine kilometers away. 
another in uh, Mysore, Mysore, we called as Mysore complex. And the fourth one is in Palakkad, which is in Kerala. We have four manufacturing complexes, then 12 regional offices spread across India. You know, it is uh, represented in round green, you, you can see. You know, in New Delhi, there is one like that. There are uh, 12 regional offices. We just said that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we have uh, 30, 15 uh, district offices and two different space division and uh, seven activity centers. So you can see from down south from Madurai to Leh on the north and from uh, east from uh, uh, you know, Itanagar to uh, Ahmedabad on, in the west. So we are totally spread out across India. This is one of the major, you know, strength of BML. And uh, this is about, you know, the business verticals of BML. We have three business verticals, defense and aerospace, mining and construction and rail and metro. So if you see all these three verticals, defense contributes around 23 percentage of our turnover in 20 to 23. Mining and construction has contributed 50% of our turnover. And from rail and metro, we got 27%. And uh, equity base wise, government of India holds 54%. And other, others hold 46%. We are a Miniratna category one company. We were incorporated on 11th of May, 1964. Basically, we were a division in HAL, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Then it got spinned off as a separate company. So BML came into being on 11th of May, 64. And we serve the core sectors of economy, you are fully aware. Defense and aerospace, coal, mining, steel, cement, power, irrigation, and others. I'll go to the next slide. This is, these are our major, some of the products, some of the major products of BM. Uh, I can go into detail. If you have shortage of time, I will pass this. So major, I can explain. These are high mobility. You can see in the first on the left side top is the high mobility vehicle, BML Tatra we call. Uh, this is the, uh, the live picture which was taken from uh, Republic Day Parade in uh, Delhi. So on our Tatra platform, the missiles are fitted. Then the uh, air, uh, the armored recovery vehicles, like that. There are plenty of uh, major vehicles only, major equipment only we have uh, shown here. And next, these are our major accomplishments of BML. Till date, uh, we have supplied around 8,800 uh, numbers of high mobility vehicles. 350 ARVs and 3,200 trailers and military wagons. Then pontoon bridge system, we had supplied till now six sets. Coming to rail and metro, we have supplied 18,000 coaches till now, rail coaches, and 900 EMUs, electrical multiple units, and 1,800 metro cars. So around 48 percent of metro cars which are running in India are made in Bemal factory in Bangalore complex. 33,000. Yes. Shashi, just a minute, just a minute. Madam, you have to accept our uh, director of mining. I think he is uh, waiting in the lobby. Sure. Amit, will you please do the needful right away? Yes, Thank sir. you, sir. He will do it. Yes, yeah. Can I continue? Yes, yeah, Shashi. Go ahead. All right. the, then the yellow color shows the mining and construction segment. Ma These major accomplishments. Around 33,000 uh, MNC equipment we had supplied till date, and 28,000 engines which are manufactured in our engine factory in Mysore. Coming to exports, uh, till now we have exported to 30 countries, 70 countries, 70. Totaling to 5,950 crores. Of course, this includes deemed exports, you know, which we are supplying to uh, the projects eligible as deemed exports within India, because that is also uh, grouped as exports only as far as ministry is concerned. Then these are our global presence all over the world. Uh, these 70 countries. The last one which we added in last year was Cameroon. To Cameroon government, we had supplied a uh, you know, number of mining uh, MNC equipment, mining equipment. So you can see the table below, our export, you know, the, uh, the figures. In 1920, we were at 62 crores. In 20 to 23, our export figure total is 830 crores. So more, more or less in all the continents we are there. In Australia, we could we have of course participated in an ex exhibition. We could we are yet to get an order from Australian region. Yeah. These are our indigenization uh, efforts which we are continuing to do. We do we have constant efforts on indigenizing our uh, products in line with the Admanirbhar uh, Bharat of our uh, honourable Prime Minister's vision. 
So in the maximum indigenization we have done on our water sprinklers, which is 97 percentage. Like that it goes, dumpers with 95 percentage, excavators we have done uh, till now 92 percentage, then uh, motor graders uh, 90, like that. In high mobility of, uh, trucks, we are at 95 percentage. So you can see the least one is in metro cars. Metro cars, our indigenization level is 66 percentage. Why? Because mainly, you know, in metro cars, the major component is the propulsion. Propulsion in India, it is not made. So we import the propulsion from uh, either Japan or Korea. Of now, it is Japan only. Then next, uh, these are the shareholding pattern. Government of India holds 54.03 percentage. Like that, it goes. Then these are our, some of the key highlights of BML in the last four years. Uh, the major one is the share price, of course, you know, we are at 12. In, this, these figures are as on date of 31st March 2023. Our net worth now it is 2,395 crores. So last year we were at 2,307 crores, totally 88 crores of net worth we could add in 20 to 23. Working capital is 2,480 crores. You can see here itself. Last year it was 2,822 crores, 2,822 crores. It has come down to 2,480 crores because uh, some of the you know major collections we could do in last year. So our working capital requirement had come down in last year. Manpower, uh, we are at 5,197. We were at uh, 6,602 in uh, 1920. So there is a reduction of manpower. This normal separation of people throughout the year, it happens. Around 400 to 450 people retire every year in our company. We also add manpower, but that is not commensurate with the separations, which is so to the extent of requirement, only we recruit people. So our uh, manpower strength that come down. EBITDA percentage, this was one of our major, you know, as a challenge, our CMD also mentioned the pre last year's investors meet. We wanted to achieve 10 percentage of EBITDA, which we could achieve in last year. Previous year it was 7.75 percentage. Uh, this year in 20 to 23, it is 10 percentage. Then uh, some of the key highlights, R&D expenditure as percentage of sales, we do around 1.95 percentage. Then sales on competition mode, uh, you know, unlike other public sectors in India where they get most of the orders from uh, government of India through non-competition mode, we get our 73 percentage orders from through competition route only. Outsourcing as percentage of uh, VOP, we do 48 percentage of our uh, value of production through outsourcing mode. And CSR as a percentage of average three, three years PBT is four, four percentage. It is above the threshold value of two percentage of annual three years PBT. Then green energy, we have captive consumption green energy that is through windmill we generate energy. So 91 percentage of our you know, uh, requirement is met through our captive consumption green energy source only. DMC. Please wait. No, even now, uh, sir. I was told DM sir uh, couldn't join, sir, even today. He is waiting in the lobby. Amit, ma'am, I think uh, it is an automatic join. So lobby. No, it is not. Lobby. It cannot be automatic join. You have to accept when it is on the panel. Okay, I'll just check again. Yeah. Hold on. I am informed. Give me one more minute, please. We'll do the next. Go ahead so that we can start the question answer. Right, yeah. Please go ahead, Mr. Shashi. Sure. This is the breakup of our uh, turnover last year. This sales achieved through the revenue through sale of products and services. Our in 22-23, our sales figure turnover was 3,839 3, crores. Just, just the breakup is like this 50% from MNC, which I have already told, then 23% from different segment and 27% from Rail Metro. Previous year, uh, actually in 21 22, our turnover was more. This year, uh, value our turnover figure is a bit less, mainly because of you know the uh, some of the products we could not uh, supply because customers didn't want uh, us to supply the items at that point of time. That is that will get compensated in current year. Then this is Jesse. Jesse. Anita? Yeah. 
this is the value of production figures this there is a reduction in value of production in 22 23 compared to last year that is it, 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 because this comes rate with the value of sales this is this is the order book position as on 31st march 23 our order book was at 8570 crores this has substantially gone up now because now sir will be explaining all that the, major, the orders backed by bml now post march 23 Then, this is gross margin and PAT. So you could see we have considerably grown up in uh, gross margin and the PAT. But we had an increase of twenty-one uh, percentage gross margin, and in PAT we had a growth of eighteen percentage. This is our VOP per employee and manpower strength. VOP per employee we could add one lakh per employee last year. So we are now at seventy-three lakh per employee. VOP value of production and manpower wise, which I have already told you, we are at five thousand one ninety seven. So compared to previous year, seven percent is reduction. This is a normal reduction. This is nothing alarming. If if we depending on our order book status, we can ramp up our manpower. That is not a problem because a lot of manpower we take through contract source. Then this is our collection. Uh, the last year collection was at five four thousand. Six hundred fifty-six crores. Yeah. Our debtors have come down. This is uh, this has been one of the significant achievement in twenty to twenty-three for us, because debtors has been uh, a concern for us. Last year we could uh, you know realize um, many old debts, so the debtors' positions have come down. Eighty from eighteen sixty-one crores in March twenty-two to twelve thirty-seven crores in March twenty-three. This inventory employee cost and finance cost. Inventory wise, we have two thousand sixty one crores inventory. That gets utilized in the you know current uh, two quarters. Then employee cost, uh, we are at twenty two percentage of VOP. And finance cost wise, we have come down. Though the uh, bank rates have gone up in the market, we could reduce our finance cost because of our you know, better financial management. That's it. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Commerce Analyst. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. Has he joined? Uh, he's waiting to join as a panelist. Ma'am, I can see Mr. Shankaru Roy now. Please yeah. add him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, there. I, okay. I think Welcome, Mr. Roy. Okay. He had joined in the other link, panelist link. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Because this was automatic. Correct. So thank you so much for your presentation, Mr. Shashi. That really helped us Mr. and Shashi. the participants. and as always market looks for future and we would be very happy to know in each of the segments what kind of order inflow uh, we are looking at and what kind of orders are really coming in yeah uh, like as uh, mr shashi explained as of uh, 31st march or 1st april uh, this year our order book was 8570 now as of 1st june it stands at 9227 we got the vande bharat order for 10 rigs from icf then uh, we got some defense orders also now present order if you see in uh, mining and construction it is 1455 crores defense uh, 4032 crores and rail and metro 3740 crores now there are some orders in pipeline you may be already right. aware that uh, in rail and metro for the bangalore metro uh, 5 rsdm project which is for 318 cars we are l1 so any time we are expecting can you tell us in terms of amount of order uh, it this is, is numbers if you yeah, convert it into amount in cars it uh, the value is 3177 crores correct that makes the difference and uh, another uh, tender we are l1 for bangalore metro only that is for 72 cars so that uh, value is 760 crores so it's total of 3937 crores now this is as far as uh, rail and metro which uh, orders are like already everything is over it's any time it is expected now coming to defense we are uh, already we are expecting orders like for the akash project which the media has been talking about that bell and bdl they have got orders and all 
Now, the basic vehicle, the high mobility vehicle for those uh, systems, it will be taken from us. So the negotiations and all are completed with Bell and BDL. So that also we are going to get, uh, it is around 208 numbers. Which means about 220 numbers. It will be roughly around uh, five, 350 5, crores. 350 oh, crores. 350 crores. 350 crores. Plus, uh, there are some uh, other uh, like uh, emergency basis. Uh, Army is taking some more high mobility vehicles. So that is there. Then command post vehicle and all that also negotiation all has been completed. Now, all this put together, whatever negotiation is completed, we are expecting an order of almost 1,400 crores. Correct. Uh, so uh, around 4,000 crores in rail and metro and in defense, another 1,400 crores. That so, is uh, almost concluded orders. Yes, yes, almost concluded orders. And uh, in the pipeline, if you see... Uh, Correct. Future tenders like uh, already Mumbai Metro, line six, Metro, if you see, line six, that is for 108 cars. The tender is already out. And uh, in fact, amounting have, to about? Uh, you can take approximately per car uh, 10 crores. So it it's will a thousand be crores a thousand tender. Crores, around 1000 crores tender. Then uh, further tenders, Mumbai Metro tenders, which are in line are the Chennai Metro, Patna Metro, and uh, Mumbai Metro line four, and then Hyderabad Metro. So totally around uh, 714 uh, cards uh, tenders are going to- So almost 7,000 crores. Around 7,000 crores. Then uh, today itself, the uh, Mumbai Rail Vikas Corporation, they require the suburban EMUs, which is now being called as Vande Metro, whatever railway minister has been mentioning. So that requirement is for 238 rakes. Each rake is of 12 cars. Now that consists of uh, not only design, build and supply of the rakes, even the maintenance for 35 years, plus uh, two depots have to be built up. And uh, further another two depots, uh, it has to be upgraded. So the total value is expected somewhere around 17,000 to 20,000 crores. Absolutely, but okay. <clears throat> So, so uh, some of the foreign uh, consortiums will also bid for these kind of orders? Yeah, it is an international bid. So they can also bid. We'll have to wait and see. There are some Correct, very, but few, would they be having, very few uh, bidders are there. Correct. But would they be having these kind of uh, manufacturing facility or are there any conditions which makes probably BEML a very uh, most promising supplier because of the manufacturing facility are there any conditions in the right tender now, there are uh, three companies which are uh, having the manufacturing facilities in the country one mm. is alstom bombardier and uh, next is bml and then uh, titagard is there these are the three okay. people, people who are having the facilities in the country other than the railway of their own production units and all that so from very initial talks that you're talking about you know like for from 19 to 23, five years, your order inflow has been recovering between at peak in 19, close to about 6,000 crores to 22, about 2,000 crores. So this has been the range of order inflow. FY23, I guess you all got fresh orders of about 3,200. Yes. What I can make out from just the initial discussion that FY24, your order inflow looks like will definitely exceed 6,000 crores. And probably uh, if some of these tenders happen in time, it can be closer to 10,000 crores. Are there any other tenders which have opened? Uh, see, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 5,500 crores of uh, orders is uh, like, it's already there in our kitty. Only we have to Absolutely. get order. So presently we are having 9,000. And uh, so that will make it uh, almost uh, 14,000 crores. Order, order backlog. Yeah, order single. And uh, these tenders also Mumbai Metro Line 6 and this MRVC and all, that will be finalized this financial year only. Okay. So we hope to bag some of them, if not all of them. So our plan is that at least uh, we should cross and have an order book of 16,000 plus crores uh, by the year end. 
Correct. Uh, in defense, if you see, we are working, there are a lot of requirements for, again, high mobility vehicles for uh, gun towing purpose. And uh, even uh, for other purposes, also a lot of uh, requirements are there. And they're talking of to the tune of 1,500 to 1,600 numbers and all that. So that will be a very big order. And uh, armored recovery vehicle overhauling. We have recently mm. done the overhauling for uh, two armored recovery vehicles. Mm. Other we'll have to do another uh, 350 numbers are expected. Sir, can you please always convert into rupee also? That will be very helpful for us. Okay. Uh, like since these things are not finalized, uh, it will be only... Yeah, a, yeah but uh, 350 figure. numbers means approximately what value? Approximately, say, uh, each will be uh, six crores. Correct. The overall in part of it. And uh, similarly, the high mobility vehicle also, there are a lot of, quite a lot of old vehicles, uh, which we had supplied long back. So mm. that also needs to be overall done all. So that's almost 500 numbers. That will be maybe another one crore. So 500 okay. crores here and uh, 2000 crores there. So 2,500 crores of uh, overalling work uh, that we are expecting. And uh, this 1,600 numbers and all further high mobility vehicles and all whatever I was talking, roughly it is around 1.8 crores or so the pricing will be. So, Correct. Uh, so order backlog, which we started the year at close to 8,000 crores, in all probability, and I still feel conservatively, you all expect that could be 16,000 crore if we are sitting on 31st March, 2024. Yes, minimum. <laughs> minimum, exactly. Conservatively is what I could figure yes. from this discussion. So just can you give us some guidance as to what is generally the execution period once you receive these orders? See, uh, any metro order or defense order, uh, the first one, uh, minimum 18 months to two years time is required, 18 months to 24 months. Okay. You need to build the first rake and then uh, the trials and all is done and all. After that, it is uh, like, for instance, this uh, Mumbai Rail Vikas Corporation, whatever tender has come out today, they are going to give us two years time frame for the first rake. And then uh, we will have to supply 50 rakes. Uh, sorry, uh, it is six, 600 cars per year. Okay. So it's a 50 rakes, correct. 50 rakes, uh, 12 rakes mm. per car. 600 cars per year we will have to supply. So uh, generally, uh, rail and metro and defense uh, the initial period of two years will be there. Like we for Mumbai Metro order, which we are having, already that period is over and now we are delivering the Mumbai Metro. So it's like that. So when the order execution period is say over three years or four years, mm -hmm. are most of the raw materials passed through? Uh, mostly, generally, what we do, the high-value aggregates and all, uh, we place the order in the beginning itself. Okay. Uh, most of the metro tenders, it's a fixed-value contract. So, oh. we, we uh, negotiate with the vendors and all and uh, finalize in the beginning of the contract itself. Uh, some raw materials, like the steel and all, which is uh, not much, that uh, over the years we procure it. To that extent, the variability is up in margins could be a possibility. Yes, yes. And uh, still to understand a bit more, even defense is this kind of three to four years of execution cycle? Yes, it has. Okay. Like uh, presently, we are having an order for uh, Pinaka, mm. multi barrel rocket launcher. So, that we are having order of uh, 330 vehicles. Now, initially, we call it as the first of production model mm. that is manufactured, or it's something like a prototype. So, it is mm. manufactured, and then it goes to Army for trials. So, now the trials are over. So, for that, almost two years period is now over almost. Okay, so now got we'll it. be starting, we'll be going into the production phase. 
where mm. you'll be doing the bulk production. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what kind of advance do you get once you get these orders? Uh, Metro, it is normally 15% is there. Okay. And uh, yeah, 15% around. Correct, right, 15% is Metro. Yeah. Yes. We have not touched the uh, mining side of the business. We yes. quickly touch it and then we go over I, to I, I would, I would I would request Shantanuji to take the mining thing forward. A lot of opportunities sure. are coming up, especially in the export also. So he will explain. Okay, great. Would love to hear him out. Please, sir, over to you. Yes, madam. Uh, so what uh, kind of uh, uh, outlook is there for this business? both in terms of orders and execution domestically and exports? Uh, firstly, I would say that uh, the mining uh, sector outlook is pretty stable. Uh, as far as the orders, orders are concerned, so uh, mining, uh, normally the orders start going in from uh, around November, December. And year on year, we have seen that uh, mining has contributed uh, between 45% to 50% of the company's revenues. Last mm -hmm. year in mining and construction business, it contributed 50% to the company's top line. Correct. Uh, if you look at our exports, 95% of the exports that BML has done till now is from the mining and construction business. Uh, this year uh, also, we have a very ambitious uh, uh, revenue target. Uh, we are looking at uh, almost 45% contribution uh, to the company's top line this year. And in absolute terms, there will be a growth of at least 15% over last year's uh, revenue from the mining and construction business. Mm -hmm. We are uh, in the overburden uh, uh, segment for the open cast mines, mm -hmm. wherein we supply the bulldozers, excavators, motor graders, uh, water sprinklers, dump trucks, plus uh, the loaders, etc. Uh, we are uh, looking at uh, uh, order inflow of uh, almost uh, 1,200 to 1,400 crores in mining and construction business. We already are sitting on orders worth 1,600 crores. Uh, as far as exports are concerned, we are presently having opportunities worth 1,000 crores. So unlike uh, Rail Metro, unlike uh, Defense, wherein one Metro project will be 3,000, 4,000 crores, here basically to get an order of 4,000 crores, we'll need to sell at least some 100 uh, numbers of medium uh, range equipment. If you go for high-end equipment, for example, a 190 ton dump truck, mm. then uh, uh, it, it, uh, it is priced at around 20 crores per equipment. And if you have to do uh, 4,000 crores from 190 ton dump truck, we need to mm. sell at least 400 numbers. So basically, it's a mix of the complete uh, range of equipment, domestic plus uh, exports, as well as uh, the service and uh, spares business is accounting for almost 40% uh, of the revenue for the mining construction, which basically gives us our bottom line. Exactly. Uh, if you if you look at the uh, multinational companies, uh, companies like Caterpillar, Komatsu, they are also looking at increasing the portfolio of the service and uh, spares. That is the after sales uh, segment. Uh, they are they are trying to uh, increase the uh, contribution by at least five to ten uh, percentage points in the coming five years, and that is what we are also aiming at. Uh, Apart from that, uh, we are also uh, partnering Coal India in its quest uh, to uh, do the uh, to to uh, do the Increase coal extraction the worth thousand million tons by the year twenty six twenty seven, and uh, for that, uh, Coal India whatever high end equipment Coal India is uh, desiring, so we are developing that. That includes a 20 cubic meter rope shovel. Uh, mm. That includes a eight ton tire handler. We already have mm. developed a 180 horsepower bulldozer, and we will also develop a 550 HP motor grader. 
So uh, uh, already 190 ton dump truck has been developed by us. Mm -hmm. It is already plying in northern coal fields. So uh, basically, if you look at the mining value chain, so these are the four or five critical equipment that are required in open cast mines. And uh, depending upon the extraction capacity uh, or depending upon the coal capacity in a particular mine, the type of equipment is decided. So for example, a 190 ton dump truck will be required with a 880 horsepower bulldozer. It will require a 550 horsepower motor grader. So likewise. So that is how the outlook is. I have already mentioned the exports uh, segment and our focus areas are Africa, Middle East, and of course, uh, Russia and the erstwhile CIS countries. We are also looking at uh, the, the ASEAN region, uh, especially uh, uh, Thailand, Vietnam. And uh, again, uh, there the major requirement is uh, the dump trucks in the range of 60 ton to 150 tons, as well as the bulldozers, uh, uh, which is around 400 horsepower, 400 horsepower to 550 horsepower bulldozers, and the motor graders in the range of, uh, say, 400 horsepowers. So these are our uh, immediate uh, short, short to medium term uh, aspirations mm. uh, for the mining sector, uh, equipment-wise, in the overseas market as well as the domestic market. Correct. Uh, thank you so much for this update. Uh, I will allow Amit to ask questions, but before that, I have a very general one question, sir, that across defense, railways, and mining, if you can just take us through, because on a company-wide basis, your gross margins are very healthy, around 45 to 50 percent. But how do they differ across these three key segments? If you can throw some light on the gross margins and also the capital employed in terms of your uh, key inventory and data, which segment consumes it more? If you can just throw a little light on that. I, I would request our director of finance to answer this. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so your first question was the contribution across yes. three verticals. Correct. If you see, uh, as has already been told, mining and construction, you see uh, equipment-wise revenue is less. And if you come to the defense, it's slightly higher than the mining and construction. And railway is a high value uh, equipments or whatever items we have to sell. So now, if you see all three, rail and metro are highly competitive. So okay. international competitive bidding is there. So their bargain we have to see according to the market, right? Defense, yes, some leverage is available to us. And with regard to the mining and construction, again, competition is there. Competition is there for the equipment. Some leverage is available in the spares. Based on this, that's why we are having combination like this. Mining should have roughly 45 to 50% so that my labor, which is approximately 50% in mining and construction, can be covered up, right? So their margin is slightly high. High, high equipment, high value equipment where margin is slightly less. So that will give the second priority. But overall, my turnover should keep on increasing year on year 10 to 15% so that I can increase my gross margin as well as the net profit. Sir, gross margin range, I can see from FY19 to FY23 is between 43, 48, 43, 44, 45%. So, and I can also probably see from this discussion that currently mining, which is almost 50%, and the rest is defense and metro. If we will see FY25, 26, this composition will have changed. And most likely, railway and defense as a proportion would have been higher. And that's why I'm just trying to understand, does, will it have any impact on your gross margin because the composition will change? No. Yes, my, uh, variation will be there, but it will be the positive variation. Positive, why? Because okay. Once volume will increase, so volume can increase mainly from rail and metro. 
Okay. The moment I get one order, straight away my volume will go up. Same thing in uh, defense also. There also volume will increase faster than mining and construction. Hmm. Right. So what we are expecting in next, uh, say, three to five years ahead, yes, mining and construction percentage while may come down. Right. So whatever at, they are at this stage, their increase may be five to seven percent year on year. But increase in defense and mining, uh, rail and metro will be more than 10 percent. Correct. So volume will increase in rail and metro as well as defense. But my cost and spare, because spare business is more in mining and construction, right? So it will increase, but at a lower space. So with this, if we see the product mix, so main our trust is on the product mix. So every year I should have the product mix and which will increase by break-even point. See, material consumption, both in uh, defense as well as rail and metro is slightly higher than the mining and construction equipment. Mining and construction, we have to see together with the spares because once able to sell the equipment, then spares because of OEM, share will also go up, right? Mm -hmm. So keeping that in mind, next four or five years, what we are planning to have our product mix in such a way, my contribution should increase, right? And main purpose of increasing and the main thrust behind this is take high value contracts, two or three every year, right? But keep the pace of mining and construction five to 7% increase for year on year basis. So it will start right now, we are near to 4,000, we can say 3,800 we have done last year. So from here, 5,000 to 10,000 to 12,000, we can expect in the next four to five years. So there by EBITDA, EBITDA will go up, already we have touched two digits, 10%. It will go further, minimum two to 3% year on year basis. Correct, because see the second important point is that your employee cost is really too high. It has been between 20 to 22%. And as your top line grows, I can see that that as a percentage will keep coming down. And see, that will give I... you the trigger on EBITDA. Yeah. See, ideally, if you see my uh, labor consumption or percentage should be somewhere near 14 to 15 percent. Exactly. Industry like us. So, yes, the uh, the way our turnover or the share of rail and metro and defense will grow. So, definitely this percentage will come down because we do not need that much of manpower even to reach that target. Correct. Still with the existing manpower, we can touch easily six to seven thousand crores target. Mm. Correct. Amit, over to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. I am Amit Anwani. I am lead analyst for capital goods and defense at Prabhadas Liladhar. Sir, I just wanted to understand a couple of things. One is uh, the recent order we won uh, with uh, along with Siemens. Uh, for Vande Bharat. So, and we are talking about a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, in metros and railway segment. Uh, you mentioned uh, a lot about it. Just wanted to understand, you know, the nature of the contract because we are talking about 35 years of operation of ONM. So, how, uh, what will be our contribution in this, you know, in manufacturing and at the same time, what kind of returns or margins we are expecting? on this uh, uh, orders which are coming in on a PPP mode? Uh, first of all, uh, one small correction. Uh, we have not won the Vande Bharat order with uh, Siemens. Uh, that particular Vande Bharat tender of 200 train yeah. sets. Uh, we were L3. Yes, we participated with Siemens, but we were L3. L1 was RVNL uh, and uh, TMH and L2 was TTAGAD with BHL. Uh, this uh, trend trend sets order whatever we have got that was from icf so therein uh, our scope is the design and development certain aggregates they will be giving free of supply to us so in this uh, margins are there there is a, it is not because it was not a competitive bid it was almost like a, on a nomination basis uh, indian railways wanted the the sleeper version of the bande bharat to come out quickly 
that's why they asked us and uh, we accepted that thing and uh, the work is already in progress and as the uh, railway minister mentioned also by march uh, the first prototype of the vande bharat will be out now uh, coming to the metro which uh, we have won the bangalore metro uh, so that one it's a complete supply of the cars and a maintenance of 15 years so there also margin is there though the difference between us and the next partner that is alstom it's a quite lot but uh, the difference is see, uh, we have already supplied 342 cars to bangalore metro so the design is already available with us uh, and uh, for your information like bangalore metro is the only metro in the country which is having a 15 ton axle load the axle load is less whereas the other metros are 16 ton or 17 tons so alstom and other uh, competitors they didn't readily have the design whereas we had the design so that benefit we are having plus we are uh, just next door so that way that all benefit is also with us so definitely the margins will be better in bangalore metro sure sir so i request participants to raise hand to ask a question and i got a uh, couple of questions in the chat box Uh, so one question is on again the employee uh, current employee strength and uh, 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 how much reduction will be there in employee cost in uh, over next uh, three to five years as a percentage of sales. Is See, the, uh, the employee yeah. right now what we are having a uh, reduction is seven to eight percent on year on year basis. Correct. So with this, yes, cost will come down, but on the other hand. because of increments and other thing again cost will come to the same level so if you see for the last 3 years we are maintaining uh, our wage cost uh, almost uh, at equal level so further yes when our order book or production will increase it will not be in the same ratio but yes it will increase what we are planning to have percentage wise less than 20% in the coming year And slowly and slowly, we'll bring down to fourteen uh, to fifteen percent. Sure, sir. So I have a question from Mr. Utkarsh. So he is trying to understand the on aggregate level, what is the level of uh, indigenization for uh, metro uh, car segment? See, metro car segment has already shown in the presentation. It's around around sixty six percent. And what we are targeting on that, like. ah uh, see targeting again in the sense we require a partner we don't manufacture the propulsion aggregates so uh, we are searching on the lookout for a partner who can manufacture it in india now the people who are manufacturing it in india the propulsion aggregates are mostly our competitors in the metro field so we cannot buy it from them because there will be conflict of interest but uh, in the future yes uh, some parties are coming up like uh, meda is there they have been supplying to vande bharat and all so we are exploring the opportunities and uh, we want to raise this level to at least to 80 to 85% the indigenization level in metro sure sir we got a question from mr amnish agrawal uh, go ahead sir have you unmuted him yeah yeah okay so hi my question is regarding the manpower cost if i look at last 3 year numbers our manpower in terms of numbers has gone down from 6600 to 5197 now looking at the way our order book is ramping up okay so two questions here first of all what is the optimum level of manpower given our current you can say uh, scale of operations that is one and secondly looking at our order book do you think that we will need to have more manpower in future we need to recruit more people and thirdly what is our inbuilt capacity of the system for example if we are say looking at our order book going from say 9000 crores to 14000 crores so do we have the capacity to you can say have top line say doubling over the next 2 years do we have the capacity to manufacture so much so these are couple of my questions so, sir first two question i'll ask then capacity you can take it see uh, as i told employee cost yes what you have seen is more or less i mean stable and uh, 8 to 7% dec uh, decrease is there now your question was whether how much we can uh, go further with the same manpower 
yes, we can go with the same manpower up to six to seven thousand uh, crores turnover. And after that, yes, when we go for further increase, almost double the increase, yes, that time manpower is required. But on the other side, if you see what target we are having, minimum, uh, my uh, target is one person should have minimum one crore of turnover to start with, and it should go to 1.5 to 2 crores uh, in the years to come. So accordingly, we'll plan our uh, manpower also in line with the required production as per the target or as per the orders which are going to receive in the, in the coming years. Sir, with regard to capacity. Yeah, with regard to capacity, if I say, see, rail and metro, we have uh, having a capacity of almost uh, 300 cars per uh, year. Now, if further orders comes in, like I was, I was mentioning this Mumbai Rail Vikas Corporation, wherein we need to manufacture 600 cars per uh, year. So we need to uh, set up another additional uh, uh, line. Actually, we had plans and a DPR is also ready for uh, additional line. Even the land is also there for that. So depending on the requirement, uh, we will be putting in an additional line. Similarly, for the defense also, if the overhauling order uh, comes through, we will be put, putting up uh, new hangars for uh, overhauling of the armored recovery vehicle as well as the high mobility vehicles. So these expansions have to be done, but it will be within the same facility. Okay, but uh, yeah, for these expansions, how much do we plan to say spend over the next couple of years in CapEx? Uh, see, this financial year itself, we have uh, having a CapEx of almost uh, 200 crores, which is uh, uh, quite a lot as compared to the previous years. Previous years, we used to have around 50 to 60 crores. And uh, this 200 crores, uh, it's going up for uh, setting up certain uh, manufacturing facilities for the overhauling of the high mobility vehicles, both in uh, our Palakkad plant as well as in uh, our uh, Kolar Goldfields plant. And uh, some more new facilities and uh, upgradation of the existing machines that is also being taken up. So that uh, once uh, most of these orders comes up, then we'll be able to deliver it. Okay, so I request yeah. all the participants to raise their hands so that we can, uh, Amit will include them and they can ask the question. Amit, in the meantime, in Q&A, yeah, there are more the questions. questions. Yeah. You can just start taking them. Yes, one question is on the margin mix. So if you can mention a segment wise margins and because of the you know order pipeline, which we are expecting, how the margin mix, uh, overall margin mix will change. That I think our director of finance has already explained. Anyway, yes. I can request him to do say something more. See margin <clears throat> margin way to see company as a whole because uh, segment wise will not give the correct picture because we have to do based on the orders available and we have to decide the product mix accordingly. So year on year basis. Yes, margin I have already told. Yes, already we have reached ten uh, two digit ten ten percent for EBITDA. So definitely with the increase, uh, minimum 2% increase we are expecting. Uh, so we got a question from Mr. Shreyans. Uh, go ahead, sir. Mr. Shreyans. Yeah. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I just had two questions. I've been a shareholder of the company for a long time and uh, uh, you have already shared enough details about the uh, activity and financials and all that but just two supplementary questions one about government government's announced intent to privatize uh, the eml if you can give us any update on that uh, front please that's the question number one okay. uh, <laughs> see again the amount of information you are having which you got from the media the same amount of information we are also having right now we can only tell that uh, whatever was the surplus land identified, that has been uh, moved out on paper and to Bemel Land Assets Limited. And uh, now the company is also Bemel Land Assets Limited is, is listed. And uh, the registration process for that surplus land, it is uh, going on. Uh, regarding disinvestment, there is no further uh, movement so far. Okay. 
So uh, since you mentioned about that BEML land assets and as a shareholder, we also got the shares of the demerged company. So if you can also give us some understanding about what's the vision for that company going forward? Vision that company's uh, new directors, which are yet to be appointed, they will be telling. Obviously, it will be to monetize. Uh, we are having almost uh, 500 acres of land in Mysore and Bangalore. 400 acres in Mysore and around 100 acres in Bangalore. Any timeline? Any timeline uh, for this? Mm, but, uh, we, right. we are not right. aware of it. Right. Thank you so very much for taking these questions. Uh, wishing the very best to the company. Thanks. Sir, I'll take one question in between. We looked at the order outlook for FY24, and that seems to be the best in terms of last five years' track record of order inflow. But I also understood that some of these orders in Metro and Defense takes time to come into order execution. How is our order outlook for FY25? Do we have some uh, visibility on that? Uh, how does, when does the visibility really get built? See, uh, in the next uh, two to three years, there, mm -hmm. there will be a boom, or rather there will be a huge requirement, uh, both in uh, rail and metro. As you have been seeing rail, uh, either in the form of Vande Bharat or uh, Vande Metro and all the tenders have been coming. It will be there for the next two, three years. Similarly, for defense also, there will be a huge requirement. Mm -hmm. And uh, mining and construction also, a lot of opportunities are coming up. In fact, uh, the export field is opening out more uh, for us uh, in mining and construction. So uh, there, there are opportunities will be coming up in the next two, three years. And, uh, so which means that a order inflow of something like eight to 10,000 crores in FY24, if that materializes, will not be a one-off and the run rate will continue to be strong even for next couple of more years. Yes. Is that correct understanding? We will have to maintain a balance. See, as already questions also have been raised, our execution capability and the order book, some sort of a balance has to be maintained because correct. it's not possible to suddenly ramp up things and all. Correct. So one more question that if the order outlook and order inflow is so good, Anilji just mentioned that you all are looking at close to double digit, not even high teens kind of a growth. Any reason why the growth expectation in turnover is so moderate? Uh, yes, it will be initially, see, there are some, uh, like uh, last financial year, if you see the, mm -hmm. The growth it came down and all so exactly we to uh, again uh, regain that and uh, we we have a plan this financial year of almost uh, 5000 crores but uh, we hope to cross at least uh, 4500 crores so as the numbers increase the percentages also it uh, um, like even a 10 percent jump is also quite a good increase so, so why I'm asking this question is your typical book to bill ratio will increase substantially if the order execution rate uh, or the turnover increases just by 10 to 11 percent. Yes. That, that ratio will go substantially high because the orders have been coming. Do I then understand that if not 23, 24 and also not 24, 25, because these are the two years when you will be doing the testing, whether with defense or metro, the real traction in terms of order book reflecting into turnover will start from 2526. Yes, by 2526, we should reach somewhere around uh, across the 7000 mark. Isn't it? So that the real traction will build. And that is when all these ratios, which is you know, all this investor community, all of us are, we are watching in terms of 20, 21 percent employee percentage and so on, will all fall in line to your desired levels of 13, 14 percent. And margins will also probably look 14, 15 percent if yes. things work out. 
definitely. Correct. Sir, you all have given a lot of time, but I would still ask Amit to one last time check up all the questions. And if anything is yes, pending, please we, take it We down. can take one last question. I think we are at the end of the session. So I think uh, repeated questions on uh, BML land assets. Uh, how, uh, what are the plans for BML land assets and uh, what will be the evaluations uh, for land asset transfers and can it be immediately monetized? Uh, this are the few questions on BML land assets. Yes. Yeah, I, I request sir, uh, I'll, 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 I'll answer sir, this one. See, uh, <laughs> we are right now the board members who are uh, taking care of BLAL, uh, they are appointed by BML when this company was formed as a subsidiary of BML. So presently they are working as a custodian. So the board has to be formed by the government because government is holding 54% share. So that request has already gone and, and it is under process. They will form the proper board. So that board only can take the uh, take further. I mean, what should be the action point for uh, this BLL land parcel, what has been transferred from BML to BLL. So at present, we may not able to answer this question. Yes, once board is formed, then only uh, action point can come into it. And I think the fair price something was declared. No? Along yeah, we have already declared approximately 2,300 uh, crores plus uh, the value of uh, land based on the guidance value. Sure, sir. Uh, uh, over to CFD, sir, for any closing remark, and then we can close the session. Sir, thank you so much. You invested so much of your time and you've been kind enough to get your team members so that we got very good insight. And this has been really proactive in terms of utilizing time of all the participants. And uh, we are extremely bullish on India and you are the core part of the India story. So I'm very confident about you know, things changing for BEML also in a big way over the next three to five years. And I think that will be the right time frame to look at the key change which will happen. And wish you and your entire team all the very best. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, madam. Uh, I would like to thank all the people who have joined this uh, session. And uh, like we, we might have spent some time, but uh, people are uh, investing their money. So that is true, give sir. good value for that money. And thank uh, you so much, sir. Thanks everyone for participating. Thank you, Anil ji. Thank you, Shantanu ji. Thank you, Sashi ji. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. We'll end the session now. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.